most people use Bitcoin in a custodial way. And that's an ugly truth that we need to fix. It's a truly permissionless and voluntary network. It's a project where you can contribute and you can help it and you can also help yourself. And the fact that most people buy their Bitcoins on eToro as ETFs, not ETFs, what do you call them? Mm, I, I don't get the abbreviation right now, but moving on. It, it's like paper money. It's like, I, I don't have a bill right here, but it's something that's supposed to be backed by some sort of asset that is hold, that is held by the custodian. So thinking about it, the fact that there are so many people and there are friends of mine who keep their coins on Kraken, for example, because they say they have such a good record with user funds and they were never hacked. And these two criteria are enough for them to give up on their sovereignty and say, yeah, but at least I have the advantages of being insured if something goes wrong. There are always trade-offs, so I can understand that. And some people search for the convenience and don't like to embrace sovereignty. But we should onboard more people in a way that is not or does not revolve around custodians because that's one major problem. Not only that, it strips away all of the qualities of the Bitcoin network and the only advantage that a user might have at some point by using custodial Bitcoin is the number go up component because it's not censorship resistant as the custodian can decide to block a transaction or revert it. And it's not really a tool of sovereignty. It's more of a speculation. And if you only have the speculation part, to me, that's not really Bitcoin. That's more like, I don't know, gold ETFs or something like that. It's investing in the stock market, getting V-Bucks in Fortnite, get, getting gold in World of Warcraft. I think that's the best comparison actually with gold in World of Warcraft because you can get it and the server can be shut down or there might be some administrator of the server who decides that you got it fraudulently or prevent you from selling it or decide that you stole it from some user. And that's not why Bitcoin exists. The network is supposed to provide all of these advantages that the fiat system does not have. And in order for every user to benefit from them, the user needs to run a node. And running a node today is the easiest it has ever been. Like the conversation two years ago revolved around trying to build or trying to run Linux on some old laptop and also running Bitcoin Core on that laptop. But I think with the development of ARM-based devices like the Raspberry Pi, which are very powerful, nowadays we have such an easy way for about $200, you can be your own bank and also benefit from all the privacy and all the sovereignty and all the censorship resistance of banks. And that's very important. And that's the only way in which Bitcoin can help us prevent the Alex Jones and other financial censorship situations. Otherwise, if you rely on custodians and believe that just because they have a good record, they're going to be incorruptible and they're going to keep on doing good stuff for Bitcoin, that's just wishful thinking. That's what I like to call hopium. You should not trust anyone with any of this stuff. It's your money. That's the whole point of the Bitcoin network to make you sovereign and put you in charge of your own money. If you can't handle that, I can understand that there might be custodians, but at least there should be the kind of education which makes you understand why you should run your own node and why you should be a first-class citizen of the network. Mm -hmm.